Hi everybody, how you doing today? It's Dr. Adishina from ftplectures.com. I'm here today to tell you about a very, very inspiring story which I would like to share with the world. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this story is because oftentimes a lot of people find themselves not knowing what they want to do. They're not inspired, they're not motivated enough to do the things they really, truly are passionate about. But this story, which was told to me by my one of my physics professors when I was in college, really motivated me and I figured that you might be one of those people out there in the world, lost, depressed, has been told you can't do a lot of things in life, and then feel like you're lost. And there's no sense, there's no purpose in pursuing the things you really wanted to do. And I hope to share this beautiful story with you because it's going to get you from a point where you always going to remember this story and at that point when you think you're about to give up again you pick yourself right back up again and let's do it so the story goes like this this is a greek mythological story between aristotle and plato now whether this story is true it's irrelevant because i want you to take out of the story actually the lesson which the story actually brings and before I tell you this story, I want you to note that the first time I told this story to a, a few students, my friends were laughing at me. At that point in time, I haven't achieved much in life, but I believed in myself and I still held the story true. That's what I wanted to share with you today. So, the story goes like this. Aristotle was one of the great wise philosophers in the ancient times. And he had a student named Plato. Now, Aristotle was very wise, was very intelligent. And Plato approached Aristotle one day and said, Aristotle, my teacher, how do you become so wise? How do you become so very intelligent that whatever you put your mind to, you always do it and you never give up? Aristotle smiled. He said, that is a great question. Do you really want to know what it takes to make it? Do you really want to know why I always go and give my best to everything I do in life? Plato said, yes, I, I want to know the wisdom. Please give me that wisdom so I can be able to use it myself. So Aristotle said, sure, I will show you how to be passionate about anything you want to do, how to give everything to pay the price and sacrifice in order to be able to reap the benefits of whatever you want in life. So Aristotle took Plato and he just told him, we're going to go down to the ocean front. So Aristotle started to walk down the ocean front with Plato and they started to walk into the ocean. As they walk into the water, as the water started to accumulate and basically got to about the size of their hip. And then, you know, Plato's looking around like, okay, I see a huge ocean here. We are halfway into the water and I don't see it. And he said, Master, where is this wisdom? So Aristotle said, I'm about to show you. Aristotle grabs Plato's head and dips it down into the water. So Plato's looking down into the water with his head buried inside the ocean. He's looking around, he's seen a few fishes, but then he didn't see anything. So, you know, just like any other person, Plato was trying to lift his head out of the water. But every time Plato tried to lift his head above the water, Aristotle pushes his head back in. Keep looking. Well, Aristotle stayed there for another couple of seconds. He looked around, he didn't see anything. He pushed, tried to push his head out of the water. Every time Plato tries to do that, Aristotle grabs his head even harder and pushes it even further down. After a few minutes, Plato broke off. It pushed Aristotle in a way and said, oh, oh, oh my God, Master, you're trying to kill me. I can't see anything under the water. Well, Aristotle said, I was trying to show you the secret to how to become successful. The secret to not giving up in life. Well, Plato said, listen, I was deep down into the water. I could not breathe. Hmm. And you're about to kill me. Well, 
I'm going to let you, the audience, think about it for a second. Why was Aristotle pushing down the head of Plato in the first place? We're going to talk about that. But more importantly, when Plato had his head under the water, what was the most important thing to Plato at that point? Well, you don't have to think about it. It's very, very simple, and this is very important. He needed oxygen. Now, it wasn't that he wanted oxygen. He needed oxygen. So he didn't want it. He wasn't wishing for it. He needed it. But it's not just, does he really need oxygen? But how badly does he need the oxygen? Does he need it just a little bit, or he needs to breathe at all costs? Well, if you think about it, if somebody dips your head in the water and you can't breathe, you need it as bad. You need it so bad that nothing, nothing mattered at that point when it was on the water. Absolutely. If somebody laid a million dollars on the floor of the ocean while he was dying to breathe of oxygen, he wouldn't even touch it. Why? Because he needed oxygen so bad to survive. And that is where the secret is, guys. That is the most important key to the story. Now, I hear people all the time, I want to become a pilot. Oh, I want to become an electrical engineer. Oh, I, have to, I want to stop my own business. Oh, I want to become a nurse. I want to become a doctor. I want to be this. I want to be that. But one thing that I always noticed about these people is they say they want these things, but they haven't shown how badly they are willing to give everything up for it. Just like Plato needed oxygen so badly that nothing mattered to him. And what did he have to do? He had to break apart. He had to push Plato away. He had to break the barrier. He had to give everything up so he could get that oxygen. Yeah, that is the price you must pay to get anything that's worth it pursuing in life. That is how badly you must want anything you want. You have to want it so bad that no matter how many times people tell you no, you can't do it, you look around and say, yes, I can. You get yourself back up again and you say, you know what? It's not what I do when I fall that matters. It's who I become when I rise after falling. Because a lot of people are going to tell you, you can't do something. An average 18-year-old has been told 175,000 times or more even before they reach their 18th birthday, no, you can't do it or you can't even amount to something. So you have a lot of people have been programmed that way. And they hear a little bit of no here, no there. You can't do this. You can't mount to that. And they give up their dreams. They give up their hopes. But I always remember Plato when he was deep down into that ocean, when he was down looking for the wisdom from Aristotle. But Aristotle was trying to show him that, listen, you have to want it so badly. You have to put your blinders on. You have to say, I'm willing to pay the price price and when you are ready to do that now nothing what I mean nothing can stop you you become an inch unstoppable force an irresistible object and then you look towards your goal face head-on and say to yourself I don't care what I have to do I don't care what comes before me I don't take I don't care how long it takes me to achieve this goal. The question is, is as long as I get to where I'm going, I'm not going to focus on the negatives. And that's why a lot of people fall into trouble in the world today. They give up their dreams, their hopes, at the little slight sensation of failure. And then they give up. And then they blame other people for their circumstances. They blame their, future, their past. They, they give up their dreams and their hopes of the future from the little failures from the past, which should not be the case. But it's because we have been programmed like that. Somebody once told me in Think and Grow Rich, says, failures are practice shots. Even the best golfers in the world still have to practice. They don't give up. So not to talk of us who are just trying to get by. And this is why I wanted to share you this story. So every time you're down, 
Every time you see that, oh my God, I'm studying nonstop. It feels like the world is collapsing on you. Every time you're giving up that party to go to so that you can read, so you can succeed. Every time you give up that extra, you know, you know, vacation so you can sit down and prepare yourself. Every time you have to retake an exam. Every time you have to sit down and start all over. Always remember, have the end in mind. Because you know what? When you become successful, the world will come to your knees. They will come before you and celebrate your accomplishments. Nobody celebrates failures. But somebody once told me, scratch the surface of a person who they call an expert. And under it, will you find thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of dedication and passion and willingness and perseverance to succeed. But nobody sees you when you fail. The world recognizes you when you become successful. And I'm, today, I'm talking to you as you're watching this video. I want you to always remember that lies within you is the potential to become anything you want to become. But remember, that potential can only be manifested if you're willing to pay the price. And what are the prices I always tell people? The first thing is self-discipline. So if you discipline yourself, discipline really is a master key concept every single individual should always remember. Now, a lot of people would tell you, oh, I don't have time, there's not enough time to do this, or oh, I'm always, I can't give a complete task on time. Well, that is not true. You know why? Because there's 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. Now, here's the very interesting thing I always want pondered about. The most expensive currency in the world is your time. Now, it's so expensive, people take it for granted and they don't keep track of it. That's why 20, 30 years can go back in the life of a man and they can never even keep track of how it went by. Because they have never sat down to keep track of their time. Because they do not have enough self-discipline. If you discipline yourself and you keep track of your time, you finally will realize that the 24 hours God has given to each and every one of us is more than enough to accomplish our task and potential in life. For example, the kings, the paupers, the wealthiest, the poor, the, the, the people, every single individual, babies, young adults, male, females, boy, girl, dad, mom, parents, we are all given the same exact amount of time. God does not cheat anyone. He gave us that 24 hours and he said, whatever you want, do with it. Now, if you don't keep track of it because you can never gain time back, once it's lost, it's gone forever. So I want to employ the first thing you want to do other than being passionate is to be self-disciplined. When you are disciplined, you realize that one of the big questions I ask people every day, how many hours is in a week? I'm sure you're watching this video right now and thinking in your head 24 times 7, correct? And I don't care how old you are, how young you are, you've been around long enough that you've never thought of how many hours are in a week. You don't have to do the math because I expect every single human being on the planet to actually know the number, but the number is 168 hours. And it's very shocking to me when I talk to young adults, you know, people of various backgrounds and ages, both adults, older people, and they cannot tell me the, how many hours is in a week. That is devastating. You know why? Because if I told you how, many, how much money is in your bank account, you can tell me. I've got 200 bucks in the bank. Why? Because you keep track of it. How come you're not keeping track of the time that once you spend it, you can never get it back? So from now on, once you know it's 168 hours is in a week, can you keep track of how many hours are you spending with your family? How many hours are you dedicating to that goal that you had in mind? How many hours are you putting into playing video games? How many hours are you putting into play? How many hours are you putting into work? Are you working when you need to work and playing when you need to play? These are very, very important things. That's where self-discipline and time management. Have fun when you need to have fun. 
Play hard when you need to play and work very hard when you need to work very hard. Because time waits for no man. And you can always look back 20, 30 years, 40 years down the line into your life and look back and say, what have I done with my time? That is why I'm imploring you today that you should take accurate documentation of your time. Now, how do you become successful again? Aside from having that passion and that goal and willing to give everything up for whatever you want to become. Write your goals down. When you start to go into the habit of writing your goals down, you start to have a mentality, a mental picture of where you're going. A lot of people don't even write their goals down. I ask somebody, what do you want to become in five years? They're like, yeah, you know, I want to become a big business mogul. I want to become an entrepreneur. I want to run the finance industry. But then I asked them, have you written your goals down? And they said, I, I, I don't think that's important. No, it is important. Because if you write these goals down, writing brings them into life. You put them on a piece of paper and you put them on the wall inside your room, on a little diary. And you go over it day in, day out. So that you can keep track of the things you're doing. That's another key impo important concept that you must know. Write down your goals. One of my favorite mentors, Zig Ziglar. I really love Zig Ziglar. He talked about a story of how human beings confuse activity for accomplishment. And somebody once did an experiment where he took caterpillars in a circle and put their favorite foot in the middle. And took these caterpillars and made them walk around this circle. And these caterpillars were walking around and walking around and walking around and their foot is right in the dead center of the circle which is only six inches, six inches away. And these caterpillars walked literally around the circle until they died of exhaustion. These caterpillars they have confused activity with accomplishment. And a lot of us do the same thing in life. We are repeating the same thing over and over and over without thinking out of the box. And then we confuse activity for accomplishment. Some people are in the same business or in the same company for the past 10 years and they're not even moved past the entry level position. They've been getting a little pay raise here and there and still they have not moved past where they've become because they have confused the activity that they're doing over and over as accomplishment. So remember, think outside of the box. Albert Einstein once said, if you keep doing the same thing over and over, Try something else, okay? So, I just wanted to share this beautiful story with you guys and give you some tips and you can apply this to any area of your life. It doesn't matter what you wanna do. And in summary, I'm gonna finish with a beautiful quote by Zig Ziglar. In order to accomplish anything in life, you have to repeat it multiple times to get good at it. That's why they said repetition is the mother of all accomplishments, which makes it the father of action and the architect of all accomplishment. Which says again, repetition is the mother of action, the father of all action and the architect of all accomplishment. One more time, repetition is the mother of all action and the father of all accomplishment, all right? So I just wanted to share this beautiful video with you guys. Thank you very much for watching. This is Dr. Adishina again from ftplectures.com. I founded Future Teaching Physician website, and I would love to employ a lot of people to visit the website. I teach medical students and nursing students, pharmacy students, and everybody comes over to the website to learn clinical medicine, which I make oversimplified for all my viewers. So people can watch this video and succeed on their boards and do really, really well, and you remember, you can do it. Don't never let anybody talk you out of it. But you must be passionate and willing to pay the price. Thank you very much for watching. It's Dr. Adishina again from ftplectures.com. Bye-bye.